Welcome to another Quantum Conversation, brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and I invite you to sit back as we enter the quantum realm, that space of the greater part of you. It is your connection to infinite possibilities, infinite potential, and infinite mastery. And on this subject of our connection to our infinite mastery and infinite potential, my guest today is proof positive of the shift in consciousness happening around 2012, but ongoing, as we know, over the past 30 years. And she is also just a beautiful representation of the gifts that pour forth as we align with Source, remember who we are, and truly live in the heart. Z. Amrita Stargazer is a millennial angelic starseed. She is here today with a beautiful light work activation empowerment for all of us in space and time who tune into this program. And she is a tender age of 23 years. And that is so beautiful. So please welcome Z Amrita Stargazer to Quantum Conversations. Z, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to the show. Hello, everyone. Hello, Lauren. I'm so delighted to be here with you. I mean, it just feels so amazing. Yes, it already feels so wonderful. This is actually going to have a sonic experience for everyone. We're going to talk about your story. We're going to talk about what you sing through for our audience and experience that. But we want to take this moment and honor a sacred day. On the collective, it's known as International Women's Day. And your experience with our show will center around a healing of this. And we'll get there in our program. But I just want to give you the space right now to offer a sonic attunement for everyone who's joining in. Thank you, Loren. Um, I'd just like to offer up this following hour, hour and a half, in a prayer, um, in an offering of my energy and my time to all the listeners and all the future listeners and all the beings who will be joining us throughout the dimensions um, who are here assisting in this ascension and this upliftment in this new creation process. I'm so delighted and honored to uh, be facilitating this experience on this very sacred day. We had some very different ideas of what we were going to do and then a few hours ago I realized that it was actually Women's Day today and over the last 24 hours Spirit has been saying womb healing, womb healing, womb healing. And I'm finally understanding so we're going to go into that much Lee. Um, but yeah, you know this is all about our empowerment and in this uh, day and age, um, it is so much exciting things going on and it's about understanding how we can harness that excitement that we feel and pouring that into what we may not be as excited about. So I'm going to start and open our space and time together with a sonic transmission which will attune all of our spirits and our energies um, and ourselves uh, together and with the source. And as uh, this process begins, I invite everyone to close their eyes and come into a state of relaxation and just relax your body, relax all your muscles and begin in that state of deep relaxation. Bring back all the pieces of yourself that you may have left somewhere else, all the pieces of your soul, of your thoughts, of your energy that you may have left with someone else in another place this week, this month, all your life, even in dream space, throughout all time, space, and all dimensions, just bring it all back with your awareness into your body in this now moment. 
and taking deep breaths of relaxation and release. Bring all of that awareness into all the pieces of your body that you may not always be aware of. Coming into communication with all of ourselves, creating a force, a field of our own plasmic energy around our body, connecting with every strand of DNA in our entire body, oscillating. <clears throat> deep breaths of relaxation. Mm. Beautiful, Z. We could hear the empowered woman singing forth in that transmission. We are elated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to hear more of your music as well. First, let's talk about you, my dear. Here you are, 
and around 2012 <laughs> is when there's something that happened in your life. We can call it an awakening, which simply means becoming aware that we are much greater than we give ourselves in the 3D human world credit for. And so share your story because this occurred at a very young age. You were only about 18 or so, right? What happened mm -hmm. there? How, tell us about your awakening. <laughs> I got the biggest smile on right now. Um, I, I, w I will go into a little bit about my awakening because it's very juicy and people like to hear these stories and it's very entertaining and it puts us in a good space. So I will talk about this. Um, but I, I want to start with my birth and my birth name particularly. So my, my family, by blood, we are Chinese. I was born between Mongolia and North Korea. And my parents are not, let's say, very spiritual in, in the way that we might understand it. And uh, But my dad, even though he doesn't believe in astrology or magic, he got the inclination to read an astrology book for three days uh, while he was trying to name me. And the name that he ended up with was Xiaoming, uh, which roughly translates to fragrant healing herb. Uh, so I feel like um, for the first part of my life I was very unaware of this name and very unaware of these medicines that I carry, uh, but very much a part of my destiny and what I was created to carry and transmit in my life here. So. Um, uh, as Lauren was saying, when I was 18, I just paint a picture here of my uh, the first beta version of Z on Earth. <laughs> so I'm this good Chinese girl, want to go to university, did really good in school, was teaching piano since I was very young, you know, this overachiever, I wanted to be successful and loved, you know. And uh, so I, I went to classical piano school for three months, and it totally wasn't for me. So I dropped out, and you know, at that time, that was my identity. And but there was not much else. You know, there was not much more to me. I I was just working so hard all the time that I didn't really have much time to explore myself as a young person. So let's just kind of say that I had a pretty blank slate. Um, and so I uh, ended up homeless when I dropped out of school. It was February, and it was blizzards outside. You know, giant snowstorm. And I remember I had all of my belongings outside on the curb because it was a very, uh, it was like the tower in the tarot, like a very crazy lightning moment where all of my stuff ended up on the curb and the snow. And I had 10 bucks left in my pocket in the next two weeks. I lost all of my belongings. And um, one night I was just walking down the street with my last 10 bucks and I'm saying like, geez, I'm sure this is happening for a reason because, you know, all my life has been so stable and now I'm in this situation. And I hope it's for a reason because if it's not, then I'm kind of, you know, crap. <laughs> so I'm walking down the street, it's about 10 p.m., and I hear this crazy music coming out of uh, this Chinese buffet. And I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, what the heck is that? You know, I'm, I never heard of this crazy music up to that point in my life. You know, I've never been to a party. I never really had any friends. never listened to this, knew that this music existed. So I was like, okay, obviously I just need to go in here. So I went in. I gave them my last $10 as the admission. And I discovered the most incredible, otherworldly music that we know as Psytrance. And during the course of that night, I met these kids who were organizing raids, and they had a crew named Third Eye. And I told them that I became homeless, and something in them uh, made them recognize me as one of them. And so they said, okay, well, you can live with us. We'll uh, listen, have you listen to this music and tell you about the chakras. And so that was kind of where it all started for me. I did end up living with them for three months and listening to this music, having very many journeys and awakenings, you know, had my contact with the first ETs, actually saved my life um, around that time, and uh, the rest is history, as they say, we're a beginning. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> well, you need to go a little deeper in your first contact with ETs. Oh, my goodness. Can you share that story? Ooh, okay, so uh, this is a little sensitive, and I'm not sure 
if, if uh, we're allowed to talk about this, but I guess we're allowed to talk about anything because it's a quantum conversation. <laughs> so, you know, uh, during my awakening, I, I even in this present moment in my life, I'm very curious and um, uh, discovering work in, in plant medicines and psychoactive um, elements that interact with our consciousness. And so that in that beginning, when I was interacting with Psytrance music, which also has a lot of um, technologies embedded in some of that music, um, and there are positive beings that are working with that music, but there also are very negative beings that work with that music as well. So it was kind of like an introduction to everything that will come into my life. It was just this uh, taster kind of thing. So uh, I was young. That was my disclaimer. Um, I was 18, I was at this party and I was kind of dumb and I started, um, I did these drugs that was very bad for my body. My body had a very negative reaction and I was having a very rough time and um, let's just say that uh, in the grace of God, these saucers, which I now know as Palladium beam ships, appeared out of space in the ether, out of this blurry pink splurge that was the only thing I could see. And uh, so they flew out of either space, and they zapped my eyeballs with this red laser and aligned my spine with the space uh, around me. And then they walked me to a couch, and I fell asleep. And when I woke up, I was in the best shape of my life. And I mean, like, had, like as if I just meditated for five hours and did yoga for another five hours and did ascension breathing for another five hours, you know, that kind of a life. Um, and, you know, since then, that was a big moment because I thought, you know, so many kids die from these situations and somehow, like, these beings came and saved me and, like, that must be important somehow. And that kind of put me on track uh, for the rest of my awakening, I guess. Okay. Well, I know some would say, what kind of drugs were you on? But you <laughs> know that to be a real powerful <laughs> Experience that was very profound for you. Okay, yeah. that is um, amazing. Okay, all right. So when you started doing this work, and then so you opened up, and and you've been trained in healing modalities. How did you recognize your angelic starseed ness? Yes, yeah, so I just want to say that um, I've really like in my life. I mostly communicate with beings through my higher self and in my dream state. Um, I was silly when I was 18. I did these drugs that opened me up, and it was an important part of my journey at that time. But even now, I don't uh, focus a lot on communicating with aliens or things like this just because, you know, we are multidimensional beings, and each of us have so many dimensions to ourselves that the physical body is only kind of like the end of a spectrum that encapsulates all the other dimensions. And that's what is so majestic and magical about being a human. Um, and so even though I have dreams about my uh, star family sometimes and I have trainings and things like this, the most important thing is actually to embody, and, and, and we'll talk more about this. Um, but uh, so it's pretty simple. I, I had a... Um, <laughs> So I had an eating disorder when I was in high school, maybe 16 years old. And so this is kind of like there's this ethereal, crazy, astrocosmic, synchronistic aspect of what I'm experiencing. And then there's this very earthly, grounded aspect of what I'm experiencing as well. And the process is to bring those two together. Um, and so I had this terrible eating disorder and, you know, I almost died. Um, and when I was at the hospital, they fed me frozen pizza and, you know, different types of processed disgusting food. And that's when I kind of realized that the institution of the hospital wasn't really, you know, there to heal me because if the information's out there that pizza is not that full of nutrition, you know. <laughs> so uh, I realized if these people who are the professionals of the world can't heal me and, in fact, told me that I would have to deal with an eating disorder for the rest of my life, that I would have to learn to, quote, unquote, cope with it, if these people are telling me this, then uh, obviously I have to take things into my own hands. So that was kind of when I started looking into alternative therapies. And I started with Reiki, went in to get my bachelor's in holistic health 
uh, sciences, and then, uh, um, and then through intuition, you know, I, at that time, even though I didn't know about um, spirituality and the law of attraction, like consciously, something in me really did because I sent out this call. I said, okay, I don't really want to go to a standardized university for now, and I don't want to have therapists. What I want is to endorse my body and my world and the universe as my healer and my teacher and my university. And I would like, you know, the world to bring to me what is important and, and what to put together. And so using my mind as the computer that puts together everything I experience and take in, I'm going to fix, find the perfect quote-unquote healing modality or process. And this is very important to me because, um, I, like I was saying, I'm very adamant in finding solutions to very earthly problems with these celestial gifts and celestial cognition um, and awareness because that's what I came here to do. And so currently um, I am working on, you know, uh, so my ancestry is very much uh, their Taoist masters in my blood. And so I'm very keen in sensing and working with the chi body and the meridians and the different energy centers that are associated with um, Chinese medicine and Taoism. And so what I've done is research into what centers and what organs and uh, are being affected by these eating disorders and things like this. And obviously we'll talk more about entities too, about implants, uh, things that are affecting you know the masses of humanity a lot. Um, and using these, well, they're ancient really, these, these um, ways of sensing have been discovered for thousands of years, but they're greatly enhanced by uh, the place we are in, in the celestial system right now, you know, with the photon belt and the sun, solar rays and everything, you know, we are much more capable of going way further than we were able to thousands of years ago, even though the ancestors, you bet they were sitting their butts down at night because uh, they didn't have you know, anything else to do. <laughs> and they went in and they discovered these energy systems. And, you know, we're getting energy upgrades right now, but it's really the same process. And, uh, yeah, um, we'll go into all of that. I just wanted to see if there were mm. questions. Or <laughs> yes, well, thank you, Z. That is so fascinating. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I really feel it's as if uh, a past life expertise is coming through along with your lineage uh, and it's beautiful uh, and the Taoism is there so there is a piece I'd like to play because this is very beautiful and this is um, a hummingbird uh, frequency or a song that is homage to the hummingbird can you share a little bit about blessed be and then we'll take a listen um, yeah, so uh, throughout these sonic transmissions, I basically tune in into the field or the collective and pick up on what energy would assist in uh, alleviating or helping it feel better or more close to joy. And so in this piece, I am channeling the hummingbird spirit, uh, and you'll feel it, but uh, yeah, you know, through sonic and sounds, you can and transmit any frequency, and it's all in the creativity and imagination, the allowance of that to come through the body. Yes, the allowance to let that come through. And as you said earlier, you know, how can we harness this excitement we feel? I feel that this song uh, allows us to harness that, or at least you are harnessing the, harnessing the excitement that you're feeling. Okay, let's listen. This is Blessed Be. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
I could listen to that much longer. That is beautiful. Thank you for this gift to the world, Z. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Spirit. <laughs> yes, songs, divine songs from Source. Yes, that does lift our spirit. Okay, let's let's go back and talk a little bit more about you, and then we will talk about um, our activation today and womb healing is what you got. Y again, you're studying and learning. You're actually, I believe, downloading or you're actually beginning to see some higher dimensional technologies. So can you share a little bit about that? Because it is angelic and it is off planet. So um, can you talk a little bit about these? Yes. So um, let's see. This goes into the astral light work that we're going to talk about. Um, and it gets into being able to perceive energies and the things uh, or conglomerates of energy and consciousness that gets lodged or exists in different densities of reality um, or space as we know it. So uh, the main energies that I work with now are the aqua blue, sparkling blue source energy that is beyond the universe and is the energy that's behind the creation of the universe. And um, we're going to go through an attunement process where we can all feel, and I bet maybe we're even feeling that energy pervading the space right now. Um, so this this is a really powerful energy and actually there is an oath that is written um, in space before anyone can access this energy that this energy can only be used for uh, love and only be used for healing and connection. Um, it cannot be used for destruction or any selfish reasons. Um, for obvious reasons, <laughs> um, we are learning over time, over the millennia, that sometimes it's good to write these things in the fine print. <laughs> so um, the second energy that I work with is the golden frequency. So this is an ancient frequency that is now being brought to light and to many through uh, the work of a man named Eric Rain. Um, he's an incredible brother uh, who's also um, a trailblazer in the field of astral light work and disclosing the parasitic constructs that exist on Earth in the astral realm. Um, and uh, some other energies that I use are, you know, the rainbow colors and silver, but the main two powerful frequencies that I use are this aqua blue source energy color and the golden frequency. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's let's talk a little bit about parasitic constructs. Uh, I guess that's another name for third dimensional powers that be, mm -hmm. in a way, yes. right? Can you go into a little bit more about that? Yes, totally. So as um, in the ancient knowledge, that all exists in the astral or in spiritual space before it manifests in the physical and that everything is a reflection of each other. So all dimensions reflect each other. And so when we have what we see as a construct in the 3D, um, there is actually interference in the dimensions which we do not see with our third dimensional eyes. Um, and so okay. uh, we're talking about implants and entities and let's, let's say this in a very practical um, kind of Taoist way is that what the human body is is a spirit um, or energy that's living inside the body. And so incarnation literally means uh, a body, uh, a spirit incarnating or coming into or merging 
or being as one as the body, right? So a healthy person would be someone who is fully connected between their spirit and their body. Now, what we have on earth right now, um, and I just want to throw this word disaster, 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 which means disconnected from the star, disaster, right, disaster. Mm -hmm. So what we have on earth right now is this disaster because most people are not aware that their energy or spirit or consciousness is that a body. Um, and so what happens is, so say 100% of your consciousness is connected to 100% of your atoms or your cells or your material makeup. So you'd be fully incarnated. But most people are only operating at maybe 10, 15, 20, 25 percent, uh, which means the majority of their body and their energy is actually used or occupied by something else. Um, and what that something else is perpetuates the uh, construct because it feeds them, right? So obviously, you know, McDonald's and bank systems and the school system is not feeding the human spirit. So we got to think, what is it feeding? What is creating the system to sustain itself? Because that's just nature, right? Like, that's just how nature works, that um, energy sustains. And when things cannot find their own source of energy, they need to find sources of energy that's beyond themselves. And this is what we call the parasitic construct. These beings that are disconnected from source and disconnected from their own love energies must siphon their life energy from uh, other beings, and in this case, humanity and Earth. Um, and so this has actually been happening for thousands and thousands of years, and we're um, now at the point where um, the majority of the big guys are being taken out, and humanity is kind of waking up from amnesia. So when, I, when we're talking about light work and astral light work, we're really talking about the healing cells that assist people in their uh, paralysis and post-awakening nausea, I would say. Um, because, you know, the big uh, beings that were keeping things in place, you know, they've been taken out. And the majority of that high-level work is done. And what we're left is kind of like the cleanup. Uh, that has to happen, you know, people are waking up and they still got toxic sludge around them from the decades that they were living in the past paradigm. So this is the work that we have to do. And uh, here are the tools. Uh, we're going to talk about the tools that we have to assist ourselves foremost and each other how to um, dissolve this toxic, toxic sludge and miasma that is still around us to allow us to be present um, in this now moment to feel and realize what is already here, which is a higher vibrational existence. Yes, that is simply beautiful. So we have to really be present to feel and realize this greater energy that is already here. It's mm -hmm. good to know we are in that cleanup phase. I know it's surprising <laughs> at times how many layers we seem to go through in this cleanup process, but we do get better and stronger at it, mm -hmm. especially because there are tools for this. All right, so let's, let's take this moment now and move into some astral light work and empowerment because uh, these are the tools that you mentioned, and it's so fitting as well as we usher in the Divine Feminine, the age of the Divine Feminine, there does need to be some cleanup around that. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> the funny thing is that, um, okay, so I want to talk a little bit about how I perceive uh, the reality and how humanity has been distorted or hijacked from the original reality, and this is going to allow us to understand how we are actually supposed to run our system to be fully connected and how this relates to women and the womb. Okay. Um, so uh, for a while, um, you know, I'd be like, okay, guys, give me a lesson. And they'd be like, okay, go to the shopping mall. And I'd be like, what? The shopping mall? That is still not spiritual. I don't want to go to the shopping mall. Like, how about we go to the crystal store? And you're like, no, just go to the shopping mall. And there's this giant shopping mall across the street from my parents' house. 
this was a few years ago. And so I'm like, fine, I'll go to the shopping mall. So I walk into the shopping mall and I, I literally feel like, you know, pretty big. My aura is pretty big and I feel very cosmic and I'm, I'm like, okay, like I feel pretty good. I'm going to go into the shopping mall. So I, I walk in the mall and I just sit in the, uh, the food court and I'm like, okay, I'm here. And he says, pay attention. I'm like, pay mm. attention to what? People are shopping and I don't like it and oh my God, there's so many pairs of shoes. And he's like, no, pay attention everything pay attention to the energy pay attention and so I, I was like oh okay so I, I started um, staring into the energy systems of the people who are in the mall um, who are frequenting the mall you know who are in that uh, in that uh, paradigm still uh-huh. and what I noticed is that when you have a healthy being it is connected to the source above and connected to the earth below. And it's got this open chakra system that flows up the back and down the front. And we can actually reverse this orbit. And we can get into that, but not right now. Um, so the cycle that goes up the back, down the front, it connects us down into the earth star, which is below our feet um, chakra, and the soul star, which is above our head. And it goes infinitely up in many, many chakras, all the way into the sun and into the galactic sun and into the center of the universe and et cetera. Mm-hmm. And below our feet goes into the bottom of the earth. And this is what a healthy being would look like. But when I looked at these beings, it looked like they had a closed loop. So their crown was closed and their root was closed and they had this energy re- running and very poorly um, in their closed loop system. And so we humans are naturally beings of creativity. Um, We create. And so having creative energy is intrinsic to us, right? So we got to say, if this person's having a closed loop system, that creative energy has got to go somewhere. So most people have an idea of what reality is. And this idea of what reality is, is taught to them by their upbringing, by the institutions, or by the powers that were, let's say. And so um, having born, been born into that, that is their idea or template of what reality is, they naturally feed that. And so when I was looking at the mall, it was like they were projecting this false reality that included malls, included institutions, included schools, and all the things that we associate with the past paradigm, um, that they were projecting and creating that false reality. And it was almost like uh, what they call an artificial uh, virtual reality. You know, it, it is virtual mm-hmm. reality. You know, you don't need goggles. It is virtual reality because it's disconnected and it was created kind of uh, a false with false integrity um, to mm-hmm. kind of uh, um, almost like steal these people's um, life force to create something that benefits uh, some higher power that is not the people. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's very simple, right? Like that brings it all back to this very practical level of all you have to do is reconnect everyone to the source and the earth. And this process is happening. Um, and I will just say that it, during these solar storms, it's very more likely and very much easier for everyone to reconnect to their source above their head, right? Because not a lot of trauma exists here. I mean, in the third eye, there is deception and distortion of the ancient teachings, all things like this. But it's very much more difficult to create scars and trauma in the higher chakras. Um, And so uh, I know many of us like to focus, and especially in the beginning of our awakening, we like a lot to focus on the higher chakras because it makes us feel good and it makes us feel safe and it makes us feel back home or Um, one with the universe. And this is great, and it's important in the beginning. But the majority of the work for everyone on this planet here exists in the lower chakras. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, I mean, we all understand that humanity has gone through a huge amount of trauma in the lower chakras, especially over the last um, long period of time. it's difficult to put a number on it, so I'm not going to, but at least thousands and thousands, um, especially in our current era, the women. Um, and this is because this is a goddess planet. This is a goddess planet because the god, uh, the, the god reflection 
bodies, which is the human bodies, it is the female body that gives birth to humans. So in that reflection, this is a goddess planet. Um, and in order to cut off uh, or steal the life force of an entire planet or its inhabitants, you would have to cut off the life source of the women and distort the ideas of sexuality so they give birth to this false reality. So in this sense, um, not only the, the, the fact that women have undergone rape and um, all these sorts of uh, murder and physical trauma and abuse is just kind of the symptom or like the physical way that they are doing this, but the even deeper trauma is that we feel that we have been hijacked or tricked into betraying our own planet and our own people. Um, and, and this is a very deep trauma that, you know, as soon as we have this awareness, we can shift because we also are, we the women, are also the goddesses of this planet that have this power to create um, of any reality. And so that is why that we have been suppressed and why we have been traumatized. And that itself um, should be empowering. And so, you know, when uh, there's a lot of fear and going down into the womb, into the ovaries, into the cervix, um, into our sacred sexual centers um, of life force. And that's because there's a lot of pain and a lot of fear and a lot of negative, scary emotions and energies that are here. But that is the only way that we're going to have access to that energy to be able to take back that power of creation. Um, and so um, I would like to walk through a process of activating the womb space and purifying the womb space and realigning the womb space with the original creation. Yes, beautiful. We will do that. And so as we do that, we have male listeners here as well. Mm -hmm. And this would relate to them as a, a feminine aspect of themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, as I am a woman myself and I don't have a masculine body, I can't say anything for sure. Uh, but it is in my understanding that males also have a womb center. Um, and let's just go into the male uh, body um, uh, for a moment. That, yes, over this time, males have been targeted as well through various amounts of trauma. And um, it's especially important now for males to not only empower their feminine side and become attuned more to their feminine side, but also to support the feminine in themselves and in their communities. So I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, becoming the uh, servant to a woman. Um, I'm more talking about, you know, tuning in to those subtle energies and those emotions and being of service to that, being of service to your feelings. And, um, you know, as a woman, I can't really speak much more about that. But, you know, the power of masculine or a male supporting us in this moment is tremendous. And a lot of this healing in our womb is um, it's kind of difficult to do alone. And so if you are a male who is uh, really in a good place and you want to do some good service, I would say find a goddess and assist her in her healing if she so, uh, so accepts you. Um, and that's probably one of the greatest services that you can do right now on the planet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay. Well, thank you for explaining that. Okay. All right. All right. We've got some work to do on this deep trauma. Mm. Okay. So... I like everyone again to just relax into the heart center, relax their bodies, and tune into the field of energy, tune into the field of molecules and atoms and electricity and DNA, that field where your body is connected to your consciousness, it's connected to everything. 
And as we take deep breaths of relaxation, deep breaths of re release, we're going to breathe deep into our belly, expanding our diaphragm, breathing deeper each breath, coming into awareness of our lower belly muscles on the area of the cervix, the area of the ovaries, the area of the sacral chakra, and even the root chakra. And as we're breathing into the space, expanding a little more with every open breath, we're going to send a tunnel of light from our cycle, if you're a woman, and the root, if you're a man, all the way down into the center of the earth. You can imagine this tunnel of light in any color you so wish, and when you establish this connection, this tunnel of light from the sacral or the root down into the earth, in the center of the earth, when you have established this, I want you to discard it and create a new one in a new color, a new tunnel of light in a new color. And when you have this visualization established, we're going to bring our awareness into our soul third chakra. This is the chakra about eight inches above our head. And I want you to just tune into the energy that is there. Tune into the frequency and the feeling of this chakra eight inches above your head. Taking deep breaths of integration, deep breaths of release. Continuing to breathe, open deep breaths into the bottom of the belly. Becoming familiar with this energy above our head. That is our soul. It carries all the information and all the vibrations of our spirit that is incarnating in this body at this time. So we're going to begin to pull the energy or the frequency of that chakra down through our crown into our third eye. And with your permission, I will do some energy activations here. Bring it all the way down into the throat. Bring your soul essence into the heart, into this vessel, through into your hands. Down into your stomach. Mm -hmm. And without thought, without the mind, we are releasing blame, we are releasing shame, we are releasing guilt. Any feelings of shame towards ourselves is simply dissolved by the light of our soul essence that just is. Take deep breaths of release, breaths of integration. We're bringing that soul essence down into the sacral. Taking deep breaths of release, deep breaths of integration. Breathing deep into the lower diaphragm that are in the sacral, in the cervix region. I want you to focus your energy here. Focusing your soul essence vibrations in your womb. Bring about feelings of lightness. Begin to visualize a paradise, a garden, the garden of your life, the garden of your creation. Maybe there's a waterfall or your favorite trees, a pond, butterflies, vibrant, full of life, full of creative energy. 
mystical colors and magical sparkles. Anything you so wish exists in the garden of your life, the garden of your creation. I want you to send energy, your powerful intention, life energy into this garden and make sure that there is flowing water, like a waterfall or a river. And waterfall is a great visualization for this right now. Just an eternal, powerful, flowing force of energy. The sacral chakra is the energy center in, in uh, Chinese uh, systems is known as the Dantian. Um, and this is the center where we can literally store unlimited amounts of energy. And, you know, it's in this energy so uh, center that masters are able to break bricks and channel it and save it for other things, you know. So we are opening up this infinite energy source and pouring it into our life's creation, our life's garden. <sighs> Staying aware of that soul star energy, pouring it into the womb. So of creation to flow from your womb into your life, into the world, into the Gaia that is your home. Reconnecting to the rivers, the sacred waters, the sacred forests. And to some, these frequency might feel strange if we're just waking up from what seems like a nightmare. But also waking up to what is this magic, this shamanic children of the earth that we are, this feeling of magic, of being nurtured. And activating that feeling of being nurtured by our environment. And this abundance of prana that exists all around us bring gratitude and awareness to that. And breathe and relief. Relief in knowing that this connection and this power, this awareness is yours. And it's here and it's back. And it can't be taken from you. And Realize the power that is here to create 
in a very practical and physical way to create in the physical the reality, the wonderland that we can have here in this physical realm, the incredible garden that we can all create first within ourselves, then around ourselves, around ourselves in our families, in our relations, in our life, and into the greater world, into the whole planet. Just allow that water to flow. Allow that sacred water to flow from source into the womb and out into all aspects of your life. And this is my prayer that all of us discover and empower this connection within us. That is a beautiful session from Z. Amrita Stargazer, holding us all in a nurturing space on this one. Z, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm. Mm. It's such a pleasure. Mm. I know that that was a good experience for many, and there may be some who do not really want to come back into this space. Mm -hmm. but we do feel nurtured and held and empowered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is a space, you know, I, um, I was telling Loren earlier that I, even with these um, kind of gifts of being able to sense entities and uh, we'll go a little deeper into that I think um, but even with all of these things I uh, even though I haven't had a normal job in four years I actually decided for myself that I would go and find I mean I sent out an intention to find a job that would allow me to immerse myself in um, the 3D to better understand and be able to uh, kind of translate these gifts into things that will create solutions for 3D issues. And, you know, I'm all about fanciful, wishful thinking that some ships are going to come and all of us will get on a ship and leave the bad ones behind or, you know, the solar ray is going to hit the earth and all of a sudden everybody's going to be healed. I'm all about those timelines and trust me, I'm holding a few in place. But uh, in the now moment, I am witnessing certain things that I feel like with the right perception and with the right language, um, the right words, we could be able to begin to disseminate and share uh, these um, technologies with people, you know, in ways that they can receive and understand. And uh, so I, even though I'm, you know, working uh, in a very mundane job, you know, I'm cooking uh, organic food, <laughs> but uh, I'm still mm -hmm. cooking. Uh, mm -hmm. But in, even in my day-to-day -day when I'm cooking, this, this feeling of connection with earth, with nature, being nurtured, one with the source, it never leaves, you know. And I find myself chopping carrots and singing uh, these songs all the time. And, you know, it feels good and it feels important. And I just encourage all to establish that connection within them so strongly that, you know, they can – because that is really the task here, and I, I guess I will share this vision that I had a couple years ago. I was um, thinking about the AI technologies and the virtual reality and the technologies that they have that are, are kind of siphoning people's energies, you know, with phones and things like this. And um, I saw this vision of this giant, massive, like planet-sized uh, metal head floating through space. And it was lifeless. It was soulless. It had no purpose. There was no life in it. It was just this giant metal head AI robot floating through space aimlessly. And I said, oh, that's very strange. And then I was like, well, what am I? 
uh, how am I famous? I, I realized that I was also a giant metal head floating through space. And the only <laughs> difference was that I had 0.0001% organic DNA, as in I was still connected to life, to source, however minutely, and that my task was to reconnect this thing to source. So for the next 30 minutes, I just try the hardest I can to open up all my chakras and reconnect this whole thing, the source. And of course, at some point I did it and this, um, and my body just got that giant metal head, I mean, got flushed with this beautiful source energy. And I realized that that was like a reflection of kind of what I'm doing here on earth, um, you know, with shopping malls. And so again, with the shopping malls, I don't know what it is with the shopping malls, but I go there sometimes just to sit there and reconnect all the molecules of the building to source. Because uh, I, I, uh, this is just uh, kind of what I'm guided to do. And I feel like um, feeding the ideas that there's a different earth and that we're going to go there. I mean, if there was a different earth, I'd been sent there, is how I feel about that situation. <laughs> <laughs> we're here to transform this with our love. Yes. Well, I do want to just make a mention that the work that you're doing with the food you are infusing it with a higher vibration as well. So it's beautiful because you are coming from the heart and you're singing the divine songs of source. And so I just think that's beautiful. Oh, yes, definitely. You know, it's very conscious communicating and uh, very specific things. I mean, water and all matter is so uh, programmable and to be putting things inside bodies uh, better make sure that you're singing lullabies, you're fermenting yogurt, and, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, beautiful. Well, I would love our listeners to share comments. If you do not see a question box on this page, this web page, you can just refresh your page, start the player button again, and you'll be able to uh, insert your a comment or question for Z. So Z, let's talk a little bit about, okay, so you're working in the astral light work, and so some, mm. I mean, we know, uh, are, we're familiar with the lower astral and the upper astral, and so this is how you can see entities and implants. So do you want to share a little bit about your work in this arena? Yes. Um, so actually, I would consider the lower astral hardly a higher dimension. It is really like a, a halfway point because yeah, there are so many other dimensions that are entirely um, kind of different with different physics to the 3D. And um, the astral, lower astral realms are kind of similar um, in, in its physics to Earth. Um, and so we're talking about, um, I'm sure people understand that when they go into a house that bad things have happened there, they feel a weird energy, or even, um, you know, sometimes people get into disagreements and you can feel this uh, anxious, weird energy around that uh, whole situation. Um, and then in my work, I've actually found uh, fragments. So this is the coolest thing that I've worked on. Um, it was at this uh, light work retreat that I attended at, in Shasta last summer, and we were doing work in partners. And one of the young men, um, who was my partner, he lay down, and I scanned him, and we both felt like there was something like on his chest. And when I scanned, it looked like um, this uh, metal box. And I said, that's strange, you know, like I've never seen that before. And so when I tapped into it, I saw this other body like floating maybe 10, 15 inches above him. And it looked like a cyborg. So it had his features and, you know, the same arms and legs. But it had mechanical, like almost like a robot arm. And so I tapped into this. I said, what the heck is this? And it turns out that um, his DNA was taken um, in a galactic war and a clone was made with it uh, for a soldier. And it was discarded, you know, that war was over, and the body was discarded, but a part of his DNA was still there, and that was keeping him from being fully present in this life, in this body, because it was stuck. Um, and so what we did was we uh, liberated the DNA fragment, and we brought it back into his field, and we cleared um, the connection in that, uh, between him and that clone body, and um, disintegrated that body back to source, 
um, and just severed the connection. So when he did that, he actually felt this kind of a energetic explosion in his chest. And, and you know, that happens, you know, all the time. The things that we're sensing like this, uh, you know, are becoming the norm, I would say. And unless you're feeling perfectly connected to source and really joyful and really aware of who you are, I would say that chances are you probably have an implant or entities. Um, and, you know, this is nothing to fear because there are, unawareness is their only power. Being um, oblivious to them existing is their only power. As soon as we become aware, we can declare our sovereignty over our body and over our energy and over our, our energy field, and uh, they would have to leave, and we could yank them out. Um, so um, I will share a dream that I had last week on this, too. I was in the astral in dream space uh, with a few friends that I explore this with, and actually a shout out to my Golden Frequency family. We actually go on uh, missions together sometimes. But uh, in this dream, I had a few of them there, and my partner, and we were studying this entity's um, thing, and I was feeling like uh, we were going to get attacked, and I had to go to the bathroom. So um, I left the group, and as soon as I left the group in my dream, I was doting. I was like, oh, I shouldn't have left, and now I'm going to get attacked, and oh, man, and blah, blah, blah. So I walk into the bathroom, and as soon as I walked into the bathroom, I felt this huge being leap into my body, and it was kind of psychically attacking me, making me mm -hmm. feel confused and all this stuff. All of a sudden, these two beautiful girls, uh, maybe five and seven years old, made of pure crystalline source aqua blue light. Their whole body was made of this light. And they held me with, um, they held each of my hands in theirs, and they said, we are source, we are source, we are light. Nothing can harm you. Don't ever forget that. And um, after that moment, I kind of uh, integrated this blue energy and was just yanking these entities and throwing them back to source like it was nothing. It was great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So what beautiful work you're doing and really assisting our planet. And it's like you've been trained in many lifetimes for this. So it's mm -hmm. quite beautiful. You have a beautiful voice as well. It's very healing and activating at the same time. So beautiful. Okay. We talked a little bit uh, about this power to create, and I want you to share a little bit about uh, how we are the creators of our matrix. And you call this dream weaving. Can you share mm. about this a little bit? Mm hmm yes. Um, it's a very beautiful uh, construct and a very beautiful way of uh, experiencing life, um, which is the rightful way that we were created to experience this reality as the creators. Um, and it's kind of like the law of attraction, but way more complete and comprehensive in that it's not so much about attracting things or attracting experiences even, but all about um, that our whole life can be a cohesive experience that is constantly communicating with itself. Um, and I like to call it um, your own living mystery school. Mm -hmm. um, so as a, it's like that moment, you know, five years ago when I was sick and I knew that something out there could help me, and I, I just called out. Um, and in that calling out, you know, in that, crying for Gaia, our mother, to show me the way, a way that I can help her, she started to whisper in my ear these places that I should go. And I would go there and find healers and wisdom keepers, you know, all synchronously in alignment. Um, and it's like this dance between my curiosity and the school of our reality. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm and I, did we lose you? <laughs> so, yeah, I was just tuning in there, because it's such a big topic to talk about, but I'm going to bring it into a very practical um, thing. It's about being aware of our embodiment and our energy, and um, mm -hmm. when we are fully embodied, 
in our body and aware of our energy field, um, mm -hmm. our energy field is obviously one with the energy field of everything. Um, but also we have our own aura. And if we are able to spin our aura in connection with um, our surrounding and hold this feeling of awareness and gratitude and appreciation, um, then it's almost like we're speaking this language um, of vibration, right? Um, and I, I find that it just gives life so much more meaning when we're attracting experiences instead of things. Because when we're attracting experiences, it's like we're, we're attracting lessons and things that we're learning and even research projects, you know, like I'd really like to learn about the Earth's magnetic grid, for example. Um, you put that out there and, and you will be surprised, you know, the kind of lessons and the ways that they show up. And, and most of the time, you know, it's not like, you know, somebody sends you an article or something. It's like you get some more and an earthquake happens or I, I don't know, something crazy and you're learning through experience. And, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> okay well this is um, just so fascinating and again I just want to say how beautiful for you to be at such a, a nice age 23 years and aware and awake as a millennial and the m millennials that are here to awake as well it will be very empowering so to me that's just inspiring in our world mm -hmm. and I just love to see it so thank mm -hmm. you for sharing your story Z thank you Lauren um, I'm curious to know if we have time to do one live session because I feel like maybe um, I can help someone okay listeners star two to raise your hand if you're on the phone and let's see okay I want to share a couple of com comments that are coming in as well okay let's uh, let's see we've got comments saying that you are precious and inspiring um, Ariane loved the light during the silence as we were just soaking in that experience and witnessing it really our Ariane says that she saw the cool blue etheric water falling from above and there were etheric bell tone echoes in your singing mm -hmm. yes that was very cool harmonic actually and so uh, let's let's. There's a question coming up. Uh, can you talk about ascension and the waking up nausea that you mentioned earlier? <laughs> I guess it's a reality that. Oh boy, how did we? How could we choose this? <laughs> um, so I feel like we're switching from ascension to incension, um, and I think that it's actually. Um, so everything I feel like has a purpose and the human body is created so that it could access you know all 12 dimensions of um, our material uh, manifestation of reality and um, because of this I feel like it had to it had to have developed so this is um, the angelic perception that's coming in right now the angelic perception of the development of human bodies on earth and you know this is like a 4.6 billion year long project or even longer um, that in order for this to happen it, it to manifest a body in a material it had to have happened organically as in it had to start from one microbiome it had to start from one bacteria multiplying into two and then eventually becoming multicellular organisms eventually becoming you know bigger and more complex living systems and it had to have happened from there, even though it was always looked after and programmed and encouraged by the angels or etheric uh, higher um, dimensional angelic beings. Um, and so when this was happening, the humans on this plane have free will. And at some point before humans could consciously align with divine will, they 
first realized that they had the will to choose, and many sunk into uh, wanting or desiring more physical pleasures and experiences of that sort. And this was their free will choice. It's just that, you know, that kind of went on for a long time and got really exaggerated and then in that manifested and attracted a lot of other undesirable infections. Um, and so humans are really awaking to what they were originally meant to be when they were created, which is angels in bodies, angels in the physical, angels in material, physical plane. And Earth is really just, uh, like Matt Kahn always says, the training ground for angels. And that's because we are angels, you know, beings who are one, who are the source consciousness, who are these higher selves, these angelic, these um, ET beings, like we are that. It's just that, um, you know, this body is not aware of that yet. And this connecting these higher un understandings with the physical body is really what the incension is all about. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, yeah. And so that's when some would um, report ascension symptoms, dizziness. Personally, I've had some incredible dizziness lately um, or you know body aches or ringing in the ears those sorts of things that is yeah. the body acclimating or ra rather probably not acclimating as well to the higher light I, I kind of think it of like um, if you have a car and you don't turn it on for like 10 years or like 100 years and then you turn it on <laughs> Right, it's like it's it's like our bodies were designed for so many incredible things, and it's still being like every round of evolution is being programmed. I actually went for a drive in a Tesla car the other day. Nice. Um, just to check it out. I, I I don't know. Elon Musk gives me the heebie-jeebies, but the car was really nice. And what they said about the car was that it is this um, material thing, and in the future, like they designed this car so that it will last for a long time. So they can just constantly uh, install new programs in the car. So eventually it's going to be able to drive itself. So all the hardware is there, but the programs are still being installed. So this is kind of like um, our human body. And this is, uh, we hear about this in the Egyptian mystery schools that, you know, the body actually can bilocate. And this is the teachings um, of Hathor um, that, you know, if you're so embodied, that every single cell of your body is fully connected to your consciousness, then you are actually able mm -hmm. to, with your consciousness, um, you know, fade out your body and reappear somewhere else because you're so connected to your body. Um, mm -hmm. So this is really about us discovering the creation of our body and really um, uh, rejoicing in the incredible miracle <laughs> that it is. It's like wow, I'm in this thing, like, where's the, where's the manual? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes, okay. It is quite a miracle. The human body is amazing. Okay, let's go. We do have um, time for a caller, and I would like to take the cell phone caller in Houston, Texas, phone number ending 3554. Hi, you're unmuted. What's your name, please? Oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. This is Carolyn. <laughs> Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Whoa, the universe picked me. <laughs> it's your special day, sister. So tell me. It like, is. Um, Thank you so much. I absolutely connected so much with your music. It brought me back the very first, when you very first started, it took me back to ancient times, and I could see the grandmothers um, dancing around and uh, saying the same all through all the different civilizations, and it, it just made me remember. Wow. That's where we come from, and that's how we harmonized our bodies then. And it's, mm. it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Thank you so Thank much for you. that. Thank you, sister. Um, is, would you like me to scan? or uh, I absolutely man, I, would love for you to scan. I've been <laughs> paralyzed for a bit, and I feel like I'm just reawakening. 
Okay. Is there specific pains that you want to tell me, or would you like me to just go in? Whichever is easiest for you. I'm having, um, I've been wanting to actually hide. Um, I've been afraid to put out my spiritual gifts. Um, and I keep saying I'm going to do it, and then I just keep hiding again. Um, so I guess it's more of an emotional pain or deep wound. Okay. So do I have your permission to access and alter through all time, space, dimensions for the intentions of healing and growth and perfection for you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So I am sensing that this implant is um it's uh, connected from the third eye into your eyeballs. It's like a technology goes into your throat and um. Yep, okay. That would make sense. It's yeah. pretty easy. Preventing me from like, speaking my truth. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just gonna lift this. Take deep breath. Feeling the space with light. Okay, so there is just some, uh, the body has memories of past, and um, I feel like there are also, like, things that you've already healed. It's just that the vibrations are still, like, in the cells, so it might feel like you still have to heal those things, but it's actually you've processed them already. So let's just transmute um, and bring these cells to your soul vibration here. Deep breaths of integration, release. Okay, so I'm going to create um, a plasmic field made up of your own chi, that's of your soul essence around you, and it's just going to remain there for a few days, and it's just going to be, and keep doing that. Um, let's see, what else, what else would the body like today? Okay, so there's something in your right left shoulder. Bring in light to fill the space. Okay, so the last thing here that I'm going to work on is it looks like this metal headband around your head, and it looks like something that they would um, somebody would use in like uh, to measure the brain waves or something. Okay, um, I'm going to take it off because it is not allowing you to uh, kind of process these higher energies in a way that would allow you to um, kind of express them in your life. Okay. I'm going to sprinkle a little magic in there. <laughs> <laughs> Filling that space with light, pulling that energy through, establishing cohesiveness in the system. How does that feel, sister? Feels lighter. I have felt heaviness even though I've tried to work on that area of my third eye and brain many times. Uh, and I do channel and different beings, but it's it's been sporadic, so this feels more open and light. Oh, good. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for sharing that vision. That's so beautiful. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank and you, And thank Carolyn. you, Lauren, for picking me. Sure, thank you. Okay. Well, that's fascinating to see you work, Z and uh, identify that you're really tuned in on it. 
Now let's talk a little bit about the work that you offer. You have a special offer for our audience, and there's a couple of things here. One, we're going to include the uh, three, we have three MP3s, three audios of your songs. We're going to play those at the end of our uh, show today as we dance our way to the cosmic heart. But you also mm -hmm. offer a personal sonic transmission and then two longer sessions and then three months of support. Can you go over mm -hmm. those and kind of explain what each of those sessions are like? Yeah, sure. Um, so the sonic transmission is very special. I basically just sing for 45 to an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. And um, uh, every time I sing, it's different. And they're different. There are some songs that will come through, but they're always, you know, uh, um, sung to the moment um, into what is the work that's needed to be done and the kind of healing and remembrance that might want to be done and so the response that I've gotten from personal sessions have been from you know traveling to different dimensions to you know meeting ancestors to healing specific things and I, I'm not like consciously aware of this it's like a conversation between my higher self and your higher self um, and this body just asks, acts as a conduit for this uh, sound sonic technology to come through so that's the mm -hmm. first part um, and then the uh, coaching sessions, they are comprehensive as well, right? So because the body and the being is so multifaceted, so I do take aspects of the holistic health sciences that I've studied and energy healing and the implants and the, you know, life, growth, soul path, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. And we'll just talk about you. We'll spend an hour and a half in prayer for your life and your success and what you wish to see to create, you know, in your body and first and foremost and then in your surroundings and then um, in the greater world and collective. And so um, that's the session. Uh, and I've, I've witnessed drastic uh, shifts and they're always so amazing because, you know, I've been uh, there of needing like somebody to just give me a little push and uh, it feels really amazing to finally be at a place where I can be that kind of reflection um, because I was telling Loren I remember when like three three four years ago I was listening to your show like three four five hours every day every night before I went to sleep I would listen to these higher quantum conversations and I would just meditate and and allow my body to bask in these vibrations and so it feels so phenomenal for me to be having this conversation with you tonight and being on this side of uh, the energy where I'm able to give back to the community in the same kind of way it just feels so gratifying so I want to thank you so much for that opportunity mm. Um. Mm. well you're welcome it's just so fascinating Z uh, when we connected and you shared your experiences and the memory that you have of your own life that it just stunned me and what stuns me even more is that here you are at 23 and again I just have a smile on my face knowing that <laughs> this generation is like with you it's it's just so promising and and that's the good news so, yeah. I, I for, and you, you know, it's again, it is indicative of this shift in consciousness that really made great strides on December twenty first, two thousand twelve. So it's mm. it's beautiful to witness and to see, and so we have a world to assist, and everyone listening to this program can share this knowledge that we have of this knowledge of going inward and connecting inward and having this inner standing, this place of this inner mm -hmm. wisdom right to our mm -hmm. heart where we can really share that with others because the world that is ushered in by that is new earth and it is a frequency. We just have to reach for it. And your songs mm -hmm. from Source, Divine Source, absolutely help us to do that. So Z, thank you for that. I want to direct our listeners to the special offer button that's on this web page. They can learn more about that, those two options for those sessions. You have I a personal sonic. Go in. 
real yes. quick how, about how, the three months is um, I yes. find this is really important part because the sessions they're real quick. You do a session, and I find that most of the time it's not that you can't do the work on your own; is that you're inundated by the things, and, and because you haven't experienced um, many of these energies um, in this body yet, that it could feel like they're overpowering mm -hmm. you, and so. What I really want is to see you empowered enough to be working with these and mastering these frequencies in your own life. So mm -hmm. with the three months, we basically schedule the sessions when, whenever is divinely guided. And over the three months, um, over email or messages or text, I um, guide you through moments of minute crisis or ecstasy in your life. So, you know, if you're facing an entity issue, I will guide you through processing and, and working through that situation yourself. And we're really aiming for, uh, you know, a whole self-embodiment process over the three months that um, you will be doing yourself, but I will be here to support. So if you had something crazy happen to you, and I know, like, sometimes I'm working through things, I'm like, wow, like, this is crazy. Who am I going to tell about this? And there's really, you know, hardly anyone. And so I feel like the support for the month is really important because everyone, like every listener who is on the show right now, you are fully capable and empowered and powerful enough and whatever else you want to say to access and do all this work for yourself and for all of humanity. And so this is really just about you coming into awareness of all of that in the coming months. Yes, okay. Beautiful and beautiful support that you offer all along the way. That's a nice time period for that transformation to allow it to take place. So thank you for that. Now, with the personal sonic transmission, how do you do that? You said you, you basically sing and, and tune in. Does someone have to connect with you first? Um, so... Um we could do this uh, one of two ways, and I usually, you know, I set up an altar, and I open up my program, and I sing into a beautiful uh, shamanic singing drum that I have that I was actually singing through during the show today, um, and uh, usually I don't, there's no really need for us to have a physical conversation, but if you would feel better about, you know, having a 10, 15 minute Skype call to talk about, you know, something, and some specific issues you'd like the, so the songs to help you with, I'm totally open to that. Um, but like I said, these songs, you know, I, I set up an altar, I connect with your higher self, and I just channel uh, and sing for 45 minutes or however long, you know, an hour. And uh, then I send you the recording. And what's amazing about the recording is that, you know, you can listen to it you know, as many times as you want, and I, every time it's something different because the intention of the energy is to bring you wholeness, and what's uh, keeping you from wholeness or what you're working through to get to wholeness may be different, you know, day to day, hour to hour, so, um, you know, every experience that you have with the songs will be quantum in that it will shift um, as there's an over-lighting intention, and then there's the energy within the song. It's quite multidimensional, the technology. Yes, yes, <laughs> very. Really. I mean, that I mean, just I'm, sounds so cool, really. I, I'm I mean, honored. Yes. Honored and, to you know, it's like it. soul integration. It's like, um, you know, when we heard you sing today, and it's so beautiful through the drum. That was the, the bell tone that we heard. Yes, that was cool. Um, and, and when we listened to it, and memories come up, as you said. That's the soul memory. Yes, that's integration. I just want to add in this last tidbit that I just came to mind, and I think, Loren, you're really going to love this. Um, so I read this uh, channeling by Rudolf Steiner a while ago. It's called uh, Lemuria and Atlantis or something like this. And in the section about Lemuria, um, it actually says, so this is the fourth root race of um, humans before they're humans as we know now. So they had no language, but they were pretty much telepathic, and they spoke to each other in images. And at that time, uh, it was still pretty, let's say, a primitive or savage civilization. Um, but uh, um, it was right at that moment in the development of the human body that souls began to fuse and intertwine with the body. Um, and how that happened was that these women, these priestesses, 
would sing. So these <laughs> ancient Lemurian women just started singing, and they would be singing these guttural tones and rhythms. Remember, there's no language. So it was all in rhythms and melodies and tones. And as the channeling goes, um, these women would sing, and that's literally how the human soul got brought in into the body, is that these priestesses sang, and then the whole community gathered around this um, around them and, and receive their souls. <laughs> oh, that makes a lot of sense. And we have history as well. Even the Aborigines remember walking the earth and singing it alive. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, as we say goodbye, Z, we're going to play your music, but I also <laughs> want to give you a moment as well to be in this now moment and bring forth a closing transmission in song. To sing. I love singing. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Loren.
The beautiful divine songs from Source with Z Amrita Stargazer. Z, thank you, thank you, thank you for this beautiful quantum conversation. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Goddess. And it's a powerful show. And now we will dance our way to the cosmic heart. Again, this music you are about to hear is sung by Z. It's available in her special offer, and you are invited to work with Z in personal sessions or to receive a personal sonic transmission. Let's dance our way to the cosmic heart. <laughs>
picture in our hands Restore all back to one Live long and prosper It's already done intentions as they go across the universe to the cosmic heart. I'd like to thank my wonderful team at AcousticHealth.com, Heidi, Tony, Tom, Pam, Suzanne, and Garner, who assist with the production of Quantum Conversations, online healing retreats, and more. And thank you, too, for listening. If you've enjoyed this program, Please share it with your friends and loved ones. And we thank you for shining your magnificent light and adding it to the world. This is when we love ourselves like no one else can. We leave you now with music from the universe. Music literally created by the universe as musical notes were assigned to mathematical equations. The result is this beautiful music available at AcousticHealth.com. Namaste.
The conference is now completed. Goodbye.